Let's look at the last two years. When have they not acted in the best interest of the bank? The banks almost blew up in March. They bailed them out with the BTFP or uh, BTFD bank term funding BTFP. Sorry. And then, then in October, the banks almost blew up again and Yellen bailed them out by flipping all their duration short and Powell pivoted, right? Every, every major action the feds taken in the last year and a half has been in the interest of protecting the banks. He's not going to stop doing that. If for no other reason than if the FDIC is on the hook, so is the Fed. The Fed has a dual mandate. See, I thought you said dual mandate this whole time. No, not a lot of banks went down at all. Protecting banks will always be market bullish. Uh, I mean, no, because there's a limit on their capacity to do that. But they will do it as long as they feasibly can. No, dovish tomorrow is bad for banks. So I've, I've explained this a bunch. Powell is trapped, right? When Powell decided to pivot, instead of raising rates into rising inflation, he trapped himself by allowing Yellen to issue tons of liquid cash. Banks and primary dealers had to pull money out of reserves and put them put them into tre into treasuries, short term treasuries, right? And we affected YCC, essentially. That's what Yellen did, right? It's just yield curve control. So she, you know, Powell kept the rates high and she issued the duration, which kept the front end up and pushed the back end of the curve down, okay? And this protected the banks because the back end of the curve was rising, right? And this is what happened in October and early November. Yeah, Yellen knows this. Absolutely. She's not a stupid woman. <laughs> None of them are idiots. They, 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 they do act uninformed, but they're generally fairly aware of what's going on. Now, if we cut rates, front end goes down, back end goes back up, banks are at risk. But now, because, because we've done this for so long, if we raise rates, the front end will stay up, but the back end will go up also. So in both of these scenarios, the back end of the, back end of the curve is going to move up. Right. And that's that's before we factor in, you know, the fact that increased margin requirements in the carry trade are going to force the sale of U.S. Treasuries. Right. To ignore the carry trade completely, both of the Fed's decisions lead to the back end of the yield curve going up, which banks cannot bear. Right. I did that whole that whole write up back in like January about what what the, the banks cannot bear a 10% rate above 4.5%. They do not have the capital on hand to manage that, and that will force them to mark to market their treasuries. And even if that starts, like, sure, the risk expands as the 10-year moves up. But when you hit that, that pivot point, people are going to start marking to market their hold to maturity securities, and the 10-year is going to rocket, right? That's why it was so imperative that they did everything they could to turn that 10-year yield around. That's why, like, out of the blue in October, when everything was falling apart, the Fed's like, this is great, we're going to pivot now. We're going to pivot, we're going to cut rates before we hit that, that wall of maturity out in 2024. You guys are going to, you want seven rate cuts? How about nine, right? And we didn't get a single one, which I told all you guys in October. I was like, they can't, they can't. And they haven't been able to, right? Why can't Powell just lower rates? Because the back end of the yield curve will go up and banks will explode. They need what what we need, and, and this is becoming increasingly difficult, right? Because it's really not possible, um, is we need a cyclical period of tightening and loosening financial conditions that allow the banks to roll over their toxic assets now we've got we've gotten a few right march through july 2022 right we got november through july well yeah through july 2023 now we need like eight more of these the problem is yellen can't issue short-term debt for long enough to maintain the yield curve control necessary for that to continue right because our interest rate payments are exceeding the amount of, in they're starting to exceed the amount of incoming funds into the TGA. Now, if money owed is greater, 
then then money available we default so there is no option they're in a they've created a prison for themselves right how do i profit off a default short the u.s treasuries or the dollar no no long the dollar long the dollar short treasuries short the u.s <laughs> short everything <laughs> yeah pretty much Grinch Wayne, welcome to Zillionaire. Thank you so much. Maybe we'll get a $1 trillion coin minted before our default. So inflation explodes again. That's not going anywhere. Except all of the money from the stimulus would be go to would go to pay off debt. And so there would be no economic stimulus. I mean, you're literally talking about something that would just trigger stagflation. GDP wiped out, inflation sky high. The solution to all of this was to let it fail last March. That was the whole point of raising the f***ing rates, right? If we're not going to destroy wealth, why are we raising rates? And they were like, oh shit, we raised rates. Now we're going to destroy wealth. And they've done everything they feasibly can to pull that back. F*** home buyers, f*** home sellers, f*** home owners, f*** investment accounts and pension funds. It all needs reset. We lived high on the hog off the wealth bubble for too f***ing long, and the government can't fund it anymore. It's shitty, and no one wants to hear it, and no one wants to no one wants to eat the shitty sandwich. But we need to, or or the failure, the the effort to prevent the failure, is going to make the failure that much worse.